Hey. Oh, great to see you. Hey, buddy. What's going on, man? Good to see you again. Dude, that was good. Everett. Everett. Bobby. Nice to meet you, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Already started. What's yeah. up, man? <laughs> Kickstarter brass in the house. Ed! You available? Uh, kind of. Yeah. We're going to head up to the turret. Yeah, that's storage. That's storage. Before we go on, introduce yourself and say what you guys do for the company. I'm John Ritter, I'm the director of games at Kickstarter. John Leland, I'm chief strategy officer. Where? At Kickstarter. Oh. <laughs> hey, what's up guys? My name is Everett Taylor, I'm CEO of Kickstarter. Now this is a this is a recent thing. How did that come about? I was formerly at this company called Artsy. So Artsy is the largest online marketplace for buying and selling art. And the Financial Times did this profile on me. One of the most beautiful things about Artsy and one of the dreams that I have for Kickstarter, really expanding crowdfunding, bringing more people to want to launch projects, but also more people to want to back different projects in different categories and really expand the industry. But I think that caught the attention of the board at Kickstarter. Several months process, but that's how it all kicked off. Nice, how are you liking it? It's the best job ever, man. Yeah. I'm not just saying that because you're watching. The Way Way Back Machine was a 2019. We were about 60 employees, $10 million a year in revenue. 2020 hit, we launched a Kickstarter, which was the modular game table. It raised $8 million on Kickstarter, and then it raised $12 million in backer came. And we're a $10 million company, and we just got a $20 million book of business. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and so we had to rapidly scale in an environment which was very difficult to scale in. It's very, very challenging scale up. But we did it. We are right now producing about 100 backers a week and we are gonna be transitioning this to website sales. Our concern is that when we launch the website sales, if we don't get that initial punch, there's gonna be an, an air pocket. And so that's why we're relaunching it on Kickstarter to just generate additional pre-orders to aid in that transition. What is that sweet spot for you on this campaign? You so, say that you don't want too much success. Yeah, you also don't want too little success. Yeah, we are going to sell as if we're not going to scale. Right now, our throughput, around 100 backers a week. So that is what we're going to match our sales to. 52 weeks in a year, that's 5,200 backers yep. for a year worth of work. And so that would be the upper limit of what you're looking to do. So 3,000 to 4,000, I think we're gonna be totally good, well-staffed. If the number of backers came in significantly lower than 3,000, that's when I'm like, oh, we're gonna have to restructure the company. Before we talk about what we can do to help you, what is your plan? Do you have a plan? Are you just coming out to your core audience with this and just being like, who didn't get a table the first time? There's a, there's a question here of just like, you have, you have a size you want to get to. How much of that do you think you can get to within the current Wormwood, Worm Life audience? And how much are we going to be going beyond that? We are in a very low information environment, unfortunately. The first Kickstarter sold out to the point where people placing orders weren't going to get a table for over a year and a half, so they stopped ordering. So we actually don't know from our core audience how many people wanted to get in on the first time, but weren't able to because it basically just blew up before they could get on board. So the first time we did the video, hey, here's the game table, ticket to ride on it, and you know, Gloomhaven, and Catan, a game, game, game. This time, the video itself is going to be much more focused on non-board game applications. I think that's smart. I think that is the right move here. And I think what you should be thinking about doing and we can work with you on this, but you should have these sort of concentric circles of sure. you know, that core audience. They're gonna be in there immediately and you don't need to focus on that circle first. We should be moving to, okay, now let's let's target an audience that is puzzlers, hobbyists. Yeah, what that I'm... Parents. What, you're not using that for... Pre-orders, but you're gonna use it for pledge management so or no? No, no, We're, we, are, we are doing it all internally. We are going to be the backer kit for ourselves. I know a lot of companies who have tried that. Sure. And not done well. Yeah. <laughs> and not even gotten to launch their platform. We're setting up the structure so people can buy and choose everything right on the website. We're just gonna port the backers into that system. All these backers now have a credit and they can go and place their order on the website. Same, same yeah. similar thing that these other companies have tried. Yeah. And yeah. so we can pass that information and that knowledge yeah. off as much as we can. So you guys are talking about limiting your success on Kickstarter, right? Pushing people over to your website. We're talking about maybe reaching new audiences because when I see the things that you guys are doing, I'm not even a big gaming person, but I'm like, that's cool. I can use this for so many other things. Sure. What I fear by limiting the Kickstarter, by maybe not using a pledge manager, kind of trying to move away from this is that you might end up just continuing to sell to this audience and community
community that you've already built. So one of the things that I would encourage is like, how do we strategize about taking Wormwood to the next level? How is that gonna play a part with the launch of this MGT? Or maybe it's just the MT. I agree with basically all of that. There's almost infinite demand. It's like that, the post that we did on Instagram, the Puzzler post got 12 million views. 17. Oh, is it up to 17 million? There were comments being like, this would even work with board games. The market penetration is actually zero. That's what I mean, like, where we're in a low information environment. Zero, you're in a good spot. Like, you could even do something as crazy as change the name for that audience. You literally have the same website, same products, and just are marketing it to completely different audiences. Right. But then still stay super authentic to Wormwood and that community. I don't think you should shift too much the Wormwood brand for that community because that's why they rock with you guys. Let's create this other brand that can also potentially sell our furniture, but we can do a different type of marketing marketing a different type of aesthetic, really grow this company and grow this brand. Can I move past the just general agreement yeah, yeah, that yeah. we have at this table right now to say, well, y'all know how to market to your community. There's things we can help you with there and there are things that we will help you with. The thing is, is if you really want to do this, beyond just getting to that, that minimum, which is the first priority, probably for what you're saying about where you want to take the business, it is how do you start expanding into these other, other communities, which means some exploration. And Kickstarter is amazing for that because we have a bunch of these communities already on our platform. The way that 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 would have to work is if we're actually collaborating with you on the marketing, like the digital marketing campaign. We're all talking about like, well, how do, how could we sell 20 times more of this? The, yeah. the problem isn't selling it. The problem is we have we are at capacity in our manufacturing facility. If this Kickstarter pops off, we sell 20,000 tables. We can't make 20,000 tables right now. Like that would be four <laughs> years of manufacturing. Oh. Scale up a little. <laughs> we lost money scaling up from 10 million to 30 million. Well, that's true. If we do that again, are we gonna fucking lose no. three times well, so as much money? Because we'll be we still, out of business. And we, and so, we're in a place where we still fundamentally, like we've been saying, don't know the steady demand. At the ownership level, there is always a constant tension between growth and profitability. I think our existing infrastructure, we can probably hit about $40 million. We're about 30. I think sure. we could hit about 40 million yeah. a year with our existing infrastructure. My position is we've been losing money this whole time. Let's prove sure. that we actually make money when we build tables. If we do that, sure, let's double that capacity. Yeah. If we launch this and it's like, oh shit, we're still losing money, even though we're not doing CapEx, something needs to change. Yeah. There's a series of trade-offs. The art of business is actually balancing growth with stability and profitability. It's all the things we've been talking about. It's puzzles. Puzzles are the key. Puzzles, puzzles are the future of Wormwood. They yeah. could be. Yeah. I can tell you pretty definitively, like, and not to get too emotional here, but you guys were in the industry when I started. I want you guys to be here for the next like 40 years. Sure. Personally. Like, possibly selfishly, because I just love seeing you guys grow. I, I think you care, and I think you really want to do well and do good in the industry. I want to see that happen. So we're going to do everything we can to help and kind of just take it from there. The wind has been sailed away, leave the day away. Go ahead, pitch. Pitch your new branch of Wormwood. <laughs> well, yeah, my, my pitch was puzzling. Puzzles are terrible. If you want something that's like really a nightmare for the tabletop real estate, puzzles are a nightmare. You are can't you, move them. Are you a puzzler? Yeah. Puzzle file. Is, what's a, really? Yes. It's genetic. <laughs> yeah, my grandmother was a code breaker in World War II. So she just, yeah, she just grew up and was like constantly doing all forms of puzzles. She would take like the New York Times Sunday crossword puzzle and like not look at the grid and just cut it out with an exacto knife and throw it out and just take graph paper and just the clues. Whoa. Just be like, oh, I don't even know I don't even know what the grid is. And I'm just gonna build it. Because it's too easy otherwise. And I was like, alright, that's nuts. 